Uh, we're going to go to Nigel Farage uh, very shortly. Ah, oh, here he is. Nigel, what on earth has been going on in Brussels? Well, they don't like alternative points of view. I mean, you know, I'm used to this. I mean, when I was an MEP here in my last few years, I was banned from restaurants, banned from pubs, even banned from coffee shops uh, because I had a different point of view to that that was prevailing and backed up by big money and big business here. Um, but this is that was me on a private level. This is very much on a public stage. I mean, here we've got a NatCon conference. We've got uh, Prime Minister of Hungary coming. We've got members of European royal families coming. We've got uh, leaders of political parties who are likely to top the polls in at least nine countries in the European elections in June of this year. An audience of eminent business people, academics. I mean, this is the most respectable crowd of people you could ever possibly come across. But their sin, their terrible sin, is to question ever closer union and say they're being chased and harassed by the local mayor. This is now the third venue after two venues cancelled and the owner of this venue is right now, right now, uh, being threatened by the police. The police are outside the door as I speak. They will not let anybody else in. There are three police there. They have an order to close down this event and when more police gather that's exactly what they'll do. No alternative opinion allowed. This is the updated new form of communism and you know what? If anything ever, ever made me think that Brexit was the right thing to do, it's the events here in Brussels today. It's the most extraordinary situation, Nigel. As far as you understand, three police officers outside right now. Do you have any indication how this uh, event will develop, whether police will open these doors? And frankly, how will you respond if the Belgian police try to manhandle you out of this conference? Well, you know, um, Tom, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not given to violence, so I, I, won't, um, I won't avail myself of it. But, no, it's pretty clear this will be closed down. They're using public order, but that actually is no excuse at all. There is no public order threat in here whatsoever. Uh, from what I can see, looking now outside on the street, there are half a dozen people gathered, but there is no public order threat of any kind at all. This is about closing down alternative opinions. This is how dangerous, how dangerous the ever closer union ideology of the EU is and how dangerous globalism itself is. It's why the democratic nation state is what we have to fight for. It's the only way forward if we want to live in liberty. And Nigel, do you imagine this is about more, this is coming from more than just the mayor of Brussels. Do you think this is a concerted joint effort to try and stop this conference? Well, it's the mayor of Brussels, it's the police, um, uh, the pressures. By the way, the catering for this lunch today, because there's going to be a break, you know, um, the people supplying the plates, supplying the food, supplying the drinks, were all directly threatened. The owner of this business, who's a Tunisian man, has been told if this conference goes ahead, they'll make sure they close his business down. This is concerted. It's big. It's nasty. Actually, do you know what? It's evil. This is cancel culture in action, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is cancel culture in a very, very big way. But, I mean, often cancel culture kicks in when somebody pushes the boundaries <clears throat> of what might be seen to be legitimate debate. All these people are saying is they think the process of ever closer union in Brussels is damaging democracy in their countries and not the right way forward. And it's that that's being closed down. It, it really is worth thinking about. It's extraordinary that all of this started very late in the day. This conference had a venue <coughs> booked. and It wasn't until the last possible moment that the authorities in Brussels mm. decided to pounce. This seems targeted, this seems particular. They wanted to make it pinch uh, at the last possible moment. Yeah, they wanted to make it hurt at a time when no alternative venue could be found. So, so another hotel was found yesterday morning, uh, and then by 9 o'clock last night there was literally nothing. The organisers did well. The Tunisian owner of this establishment said, look, provided what you're doing is legal and democratic, I haven't got a problem with it. And as I say, he has come under intense pressure. He is a hero. Uh, what I will be doing after this is all over uh, is publicising as much as I can the name of this venue, what it has to offer, and encouraging every tourist that comes to Brussels to come here and spend as much money as they possibly can. And Nigel, just very quickly while we've got you, your message to the Mayor of Brussels. 
No, I'm sorry. It's before the watershed. I really can't tell you what I think. He must be, he, he must be the most ghastly little person. Um, as I say, I'm not prone to violence, but my goodness me, what a ghastly little human being he is. Well, well there you go. go. Ghastly little human being. Thank you so much, Nigel, for taking the time to Thank speak you. to us this afternoon. And good luck with the event. Thank you very much indeed.